Nurses traditionally have been on the front lines with vulnerable populations. When no physicians wanted to go into the Appalachian Mountains to provide care, the nurses were on the horses to ride up the mountain. In inner cities, nurses were in the high poverty areas working with people without a safety net. The Center for Global Women's Health is really anchored well in nursing science. Although we have many members who are not nurses, it's an interdisciplinary um, center. The focus of women in the center is, is particularly important because women are at the grassroots of health in their communities. The health of families most often is dependent on the mothers of children. The practices of health in the home, all of those efforts are often guided by women. And with economic crises, disasters, times of stress and strain, the health of women and children really are in jeopardy. And so it's very important to have a center to try to begin to reduce some of these very gender-specific difficulties. The center of Panagia Philanthropini is located in a remote region of a relatively small country. And the people that we serve are often the most neglected populations. Women historically in the rural regions of Greece are faced with challenges when trying to seek systematic screening, especially for breast cancer and cervical cancer, or for children who need systemic screening. The barriers are economic. What we're trying to do essentially is together with the wonderful Penn faculty, is to bring the knowledge and, and a piece of Penn here in this little tiny remote area. This clinic is about empowerment of women and advocacy for women. It's great to be with a group that understands that women are central to the family and to the society here. We've in particular been concerned about risk-taking behaviors such as violence in the home. The fact that right now the Greek government is not funding pap smears for cervical cancer screening. So we have focused in on those areas that we think can make a difference. It is really about empowering a community so that they can learn the skills to apply in their own communities to better meet their health care needs. And make it a kind of embassy of love and hope that projects the excellence of scientific knowledge and medicine that Penn represents. This community has welcomed us to partner with them to provide expertise but also to help us learn how to work with communities and move health forward. There's an organization called Midwives for Haiti that is a midwifery education program. Bill McCool and I traveled to Haiti to do mostly educational consultation with Midwives for Haiti to teach teachers how to teach, basically. And what they wanted to do was study best practices, see what works in developing countries, what is uh, effective teaching in low resource settings. I have worked in Honduras, Guatemala, the Dominican Republic, and I'd say Haiti is the toughest place I've ever been. Under-resourced, poor, really high maternal and infant mortality rates. When a mother dies, that's an extremely destabilizing force for the family and then ultimately for the community. The way to improve maternal infant outcomes is to have a skilled birth attendant at every birth. It's not where you have your baby, it's who's there with you at the time. Mamie and Bill were instrumental in helping midwives for Haiti learn about OB simulation. It doesn't take a lot of high-tech instrumentation, which is exciting because you can use the same level of technology at University of Pennsylvania or in the central plateau of Haiti. <laughs> The relationships you build with other nurses is pretty significant and can be empowering to those women to feel like they can practice like professionals. And we learn as much from the people in those villages as they learn from us. When I started doing forensic work, which means that I was spending more time in a jail, which meant that I was in there and with the jail um, population, and that was an avenue to meet women who'd been trafficked. And then I knew um, that some people, most people, at least in the Philadelphia area, in the Northeast here, uh, that's how they got involved in prostitution in the first place. They were trafficked. System-wide, we admit 37,000 people in a year. Of a female population, if prostitution or sex uh, trafficking is a primary charge, that's about 10% of the population. 
If you think of 100 people here today, uh, you're really talking about in a year, 500 people and over three years, you know, substantial number of people. And it's not just the individuals, of course, it's their family members that are so significantly affected by that behavior. For this population, prison is not the answer. Because we can't do it just from inside the walls. In addition, we have to bring the other social service agency supports around this population. It's not just a physical illness, it's a psychosocial issue. They're not disposable people, they shouldn't be thrown away. They are people who can get better and healthier and lead productive lives. Traffickers prey upon that whole us against them mentality. And the youth and the vulnerability and the naivete of a child who's been abused and wants to belong to somebody. And that's the whole horror of it, really, that because they're preying upon someone that's damaged. Once we've identified the population, then they need a good mental and physical assessment. That has to be first. Then you can get to thinking about things like job training and getting your GED. If you're not healthy, we can't do those things. So this program could make a great contribution to a lot of individuals and families. It could, it could make a huge difference. It could make a difference of saving someone's life. We're recognized as people who roll up their sleeves and walk the walk, not just talk the talk. And working with women and knowing that we all have this common experience, I do think that that sense of empowerment of taking responsibility for a community of women and families will increase. I'm proud to direct a center that has as its focus the, the health of women around the world. We need to empower women and we need to give them a voice. There's no greater calling and it's a very important focus for a center.